everyone, Game Dev Luke here, and welcome to part four of our weapon generator series. In part one, we generated the weapon. In part two, we added statistics, a rarity system, and a user interface. In part three, we finally equipped our weapon and fired it using its statistics and using a ray casting technique. In part four, we will be able to switch weapons so we can pick up multiple weapons and we drop the one we are currently equipping. This dropping is done with physics. So if we pick up a new weapon, the weapon that we already had equipped falls away from us or flies away from us with physics and falls nicely to the floor. And we also activate its weapon card based on the weapon we are looking at. Have fun and good luck. All right, so first of all, we are going to disable the weapon card by default because we only want to show the weapon card when we are looking at the weapon card. Then in weapon generator, we are going to stop destroying our weapons as soon as we generate a new one because we want our old weapons to just fall on the floor. Then we want to add a rigid body to our bodies. So I'm going to select all my weapon body prefabs and add a rigid body to them. And also we're replacing the sphere collider with a box collider. And then in all my prefabs, and these parts are the parts I use, so I'm going to add a box collider to these. So now we have a rigid body and now we have colliders in our gun. Now we have falling guns. Now let's add a ray cast to see what gun we are looking at. So we're going to player input. And in player input, in the update, on right on the top, we're going to add a debug draw ray to see the ray we are shooting from the camera main transform position to the camera main transform forward. And this is the distance. Let's set it to three now so we can look three meters ahead of us if there is a weapon on the floor. And let's make it red. Raycast hit to see what we're hitting. And then we're gonna do the raycast if physics raycast. We're gonna out the hit. The distance is gonna be three. And we will also be adding a weapon mask because we only want to raycast against objects that are in the weapon mask layer. So we're also gonna add a public layer mask, weapon mask on the top. So as soon as we hit something in the weapon mask layer in a range of three, so if we are hitting a weapon in the weapon mask layer, we want to get the weapon script. So we're going to make a new weapon here, hit.transform get component weapon. And then we're going to say focused weapon is going to be this weapon that we just hit. And if we don't hit anything with our raycast and we still have a focused weapon, so if focused weapon is not nil, then we're going to say focus weapon is no. This now sets our focused weapon with the weapon that we have hit in our raycast. And previously we've made this. So if we have a focused weapon and we press E, we're going to equip that weapon. Another thing we need to do now is drop the weapon. So if we have a weapon equipped, we want to drop the weapon. So in equip weapon, as soon as we equip a weapon, we're going to check if we already were equipping a weapon. If equipped weapon is not nil then we know we have a weapon equipped and we want to drop the current weapon i'm going to call this drop weapon and at the bottom i'm going to make a new method drop weapon so in drop weapon we need to do a couple of things first of all since we want to work with physics as soon as we drop the weapon we need to enable all colliders in the weapon so what we're going to do is make a new collider array we call this child colliders and we're going to ask the equipped weapon to get all components in children of type collider. So this will return a list of all colliders that the weapon has. And we're going to loop through this array and we're going to say child colliders index enabled is true. So we're enabling all colliders. After we've enabled all colliders, we're going to say rigid body or we're going to get the rigid body equipped weapon at component rigid body. And then we're going to set the rigid body to is kinematic is false. And this means the physics system will be used again, so it will have things like gravity and so. We also want the gun to fly away from us a little bit, not just drop down to the floor, that would be a bit boring. So we're gonna do rigid body, add explosion force. Let's do a force of uh, three. And the 
Location of the explosion force is going to be the weapon socket dot position. We're going to have a radius of one and an upwards modifier of one. And we're using a force mode dot impulse, which means it will give a very big increase in force. And since our equipped weapon is parented, we're going to say, say equipped weapon transform that parent is null, which means it has no parent, so it will be in the root of the scene. And we will say equipped weapon is null because we're not equipping a weapon anymore. Going back to equip, so that's drop weapon set up. Here we also need to do something with our colliders. So after we equip the weapon and set the parent, we're also going to go through the colliders here. I'm just going to copy paste this. And instead of enabling all colliders, I'm going to disable all colliders because once we have the weapon equipped, we don't want it to collide with the player itself. I'm also, before this, getting the rigid body and setting is kinematic is true which means it's not affected by physics anymore so it doesn't drop on the floor while we are holding it and actually the the body also has a collider so not just the child's but the body itself also so we also have to say equipped weapon get component collider enabled is false and actually we also need to do this there in drop weapon but then set it to true. All right, with that set up, we're gonna add our weapon prefabs, body prefabs into the layer weapon. And in player input, I'm gonna set the weapon mask to weapon so that our raycast is only raycasting against the weapon layer mask. And by default, I'm selecting my weapon body prefabs and setting the rigid body to is kinematic by default so they don't fall on the floor when they are being generated. All right, so generating a weapon, pressing E to pick it up. Generating another one, pressing E to pick that up, and you see it's being dropped with an explosion force. And now we need to still activate our weapon card. And we only want the weapon card to be activated one we, once we are looking at it. So we're going to weapon.cs and we're going to add two functions here. Public void toggle weapon card with a bool parameter. And this will call the same method, but then in weapon body, because the weapon body actually holds the UI elements. And we're also gonna set the weapon card scale, because I would like the interface to scale based on distance it's away from us. So if it's further away in the distance, I want it to appear smaller. And once we move up to it, it has to scale bigger. And for this, I'm using a float parameter uh, which uh, we are also passing through the weapon body. So now with this setup, I am going to the weapon body. And in weapon body, we're going to make a new public void toggle weapon card with a bool spare meter again. And here we're going to say weapon card, game object, set active, and then use the parameter we're passing through. So this is going to be enable and disable weapon card. And we're going to set the scale, set weapon card scale with a float distance. And here we're going to um, clamp the distance. And here we're going to clamp the distance. So it's going to be clamped between a value and another value, a min and a max. We're going to clamp distance. And I want a minimum value of 0 0.7 and a maximum value of 1.3. And then we're going to set the skill, weapon card, transform. And we're using get child because zero, because that's the first child of the weapon card. And that's the container object that holds the rest. So we can scale this one. And then we say local skill is new factor two. And then we give our clamped distance. So that's that set up. Now we're going back to player input. And in player input, we're going to call these methods. As soon as we hit a new weapon, Weapon, toggle weapon card, true. So as soon as we hit a raycast on a weapon, we want to enable the weapon card. And we also want to set the scale of the weapon card. So here we're going to do a distance check. Vector 3, the distance between the weapon transform position and the player or the camera weapon, the main transform position. And then we're going to say weapon, set weapon card scale with this distance. And also as soon as we don't have a weapon focused anymore, and we had a weapon previously focused, then we want to disable the weapon card again. And by using that full parameter, we can say true or false like this. So now we're toggling the weapon card with false, which means it will be turned off. We need to do one more thing. As soon as we equip a weapon, we also want to disable the weapon card. 
And in weapon, we also need a reference to the weapon body. And we can use initialize method here because we're already passing through the body. We just never did something with it except for saving the muzzle. So weapon body is body. And then the last thing we need to do is set our weapon card canvas from world space to overlay, set the scale to one. So when we set our canvas to screen space overlay, it's gonna be way too big and everything is out of order. So I'm gonna fix this by setting the native size of this weapon card and then it automatically it's the right resolution and still now it's broken. So I'm gonna speed it up and then fix it. And with my canvas now correctly set up, as you can see, once we hover our mouse over the weapon, we see the weapon card popping up. And once we move closer, you see that the weapon card scales up until a maximum. So then it hits the clamped value. And if we move away, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until that hits the minimum clamp value. And once we walk too far back, we don't see the weapon anymore and we don't see the weapon card anymore. So I'm gonna equip this, generate a new one. And as you can see, this also works. Gen I'm gonna equip this one. The other one falls to the floor. Also on the floor, I can look at it with my mouse and you can see that weapon card still works. So that was part four. And part four is the last tutorial of this series. I really hope you learned something from this series. Hopefully you can use some of the systems you saw into your own games to make them even better and more awesome and to make more people smile. So we are moving on and if you want to follow me, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on next, please follow, comment and subscribe. And uh, in two weeks we're going to make something new again. I'm not sure what it is yet, but just follow and you will know. Alright, bye bye, enjoy your day.